Because of paleoecology, a rich discipline that uses fossils to reconstruct ecosystems of the past, it is known nowadays that throughout the Earth's history, many climate shifts have occurred, changing the average climate for the planet and also the living conditions of every place in the planet. A reason for the constant shift in climates are the occurrence of glacial periods with cold temperatures interspersed within the glacial periods with warmer temperatures. But how is it investigated when there has been a cold and when there has been a warm period in the past? For this, oxygen isotopes are used. In this knowledge script, we explain what isotopes are and how they are used to determine past temperatures. All matter around us is made up of atoms. These atoms, in turn, consist of a heavy core with a number of electrons circling around it. There are two different types of particles in this atomic nucleus, protons and neutrons. The number of protons determines which substance we are dealing with. The role of neutrons is to keep the nucleus of the atom together. A molecule of water, H2O, is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Oxygen occurs in various isotopes. The term isotope is formed from the Greek roots isos, meaning equal, and topos, meaning place. The term isotope thus means the same place. The meaning behind the name is that different isotopes of a single element occupy the same position on the periodic table. All of these isotopes can form water, and all that water behaves chemically identically. However, they differ in the number of neutrons, causing them to have a different atomic mass. In this video we focus on two isotopes, O16 and O18. O16 is the most common of the two, with a natural abundance of 99.8%. O18 is a lot rarer, with an abundance of 0.2%. O16 has 8 neutrons and O18 has 10, causing the O18 isotope to have a higher atomic mass, because both oxygen isotopes are in bounded form abundant in water, they occur all around the Earth. O18 is heavier than O16. Therefore, the water molecule to which it is bound is also heavier. To vaporize this heavier water, more energy is needed than for the water molecule of O16. This means that O16 evaporates more easily when warmer temperatures occur and the seawater will be slightly enriched with the isotope O18. During warm periods, water rains out with a light oxygen isotope, so that it finally returns to the ocean and thus restores balance. During cold periods, however, precipitation is in the form of snow. If the snow falls on the land, it remains at high latitudes, eventually creating land ice caps. As a result, the water cycle is partially interrupted for a long time which means that the light oxygen isotope O16 is extracted from the ocean during this period. Thus, during cold periods, the ocean water contains relatively more water with the heavy oxygen isotope O18 than during warm periods. The ratio of the oxygen isotopes in the seawater is recorded in the calcium carbonate from which many marine organisms build their skeletons. The isotopic composition of the rain is recorded in ice caps. By measuring the ratio of oxygen isotopes, temperatures in the past could be determined. The main points of this video are 1. Isotopes are variants of a particular chemical element which differ in neutron number. The most important isotopes of oxygen to determine temperature in the past are O16 and O18. 2. Because O18 is heavier due to a greater number of neutrons, it evaporates less rapidly than O16. Water vapor in the atmosphere and precipitation are therefore enriched in O16. 3. As ice sheets form from precipitation, they lock up more O16 than O18, and the oceans become relatively enriched in O18. Ocean waters with a low O16 O18 ratio therefore represent cooler climates, whereas higher O16 O18 ratios indicate warmer, non glacial climates. 4. Paleoecologists can determine past temperature and past climate shifts by analyzing the ratio of isotopes in the fixed oxygen in marine shells or in land ice caps.